Hi everyone, this is Olivia from the Alexandrian channel and today we are going to talk about colors part two. And if you haven't watched part one of colors, I suggest that you give that a glance over. It's got some good information in it. Okay, let's get started. I thought we'd start with something a little bit fun. It's called Afternoon Showers. It's an image that I did in my book. On this image, the reason I chose it is because I've used warm and cool colors. The warm colors are in the sun. The yellows, oranges, and there's a teeny tiny bit of red. And on the cool colors, I used a light blue. But now I've tied them both in together with purple. If you see in the checks on the clouds, there are purples. Behind the rays of the sun, there are purples. That is a good way to tie in opposing colors, the cool and the warm. You don't have to. It depends on what you're creating, but it is something that is really good to have in your toolbox so you can use it when you want to. Also, creating images that include both warm and cool colors creates something that appears to have a little push and pull. It adds an interest that when you just have one or the other, you don't get quite that, the same effect. When you use just cool or just warm, the image will tend to be a little smoother, a little less contrasting. So using contrasting colors, if you're wanting something to pop, is a good idea. And in this image, the sun is always going to be a warm color, and the clouds are cool, and the raindrops are cool. So it was easy for me to pick these colors. Now there are times when you're creating something where it's not so obvious. Then you might want to evaluate what you're creating and pick areas of cool and areas of warm that make the image bounce. So that would mean periodically change them. I hope that made sense, but just in case it didn't, here's an example. When you look at the dangles, you will see oftentimes warm and then cool and warm and cool. And if you look at that and compare it to some of the dangles that are either all cool or all warm colors, you're going to see how the dangles that have both are more vibrant or they tend to be visually more eye-catching. They tend to pop a little more. But like I say in just about every video, that create what you want, how you want, any way you want, that's the point of dangles is to have lots of fun. I'm including these lessons to give you options in case you do want to use colors in a certain way, create push and pull, create something that pops deliberately, etc. But doing it just for fun has got to be one of the most enjoyable, relaxing ways to create angles that I've ever done. Since we were talking about contrasting colors, I thought I would go ahead and make this next slide about contrasting colors too. In this image, it's a hummingbird and a flower with lots of dangles going everywhere. But my goal on this was to make the hummingbird and the flower stand out more than the dangles. So there's lots and lots of words here and I'll read them to you. I wanted to bring close to equal attention to the hummingbird and the flower so they would stand out in front of the dangles. They needed to be most important visually. To do this I used complementary colors which are actually the same thing as opposite colors. Purple and yellow in this case. And it was kind of a lucky thing for me that the purple was dark and the yellow was light because that also added another element of contrast. So it was easy for me to achieve what I was after because not only were they contrasting in colors, 
they were contrasting in light and dark, which resulted in the dangles not disappearing. I didn't want them to disappear, but to not appear to be as important as the main image itself. And I think it was successful. What do you think? I still see all the dangles, and I used contrasting colors, and I used the same colors. But even though you see them all there, they don't overpower the main image. So that is something to consider as well when you are creating an image. Are you wanting the dangles to be the focal point or points? Or are you wanting the image to be the focal point? Or are you wanting to have equal standing? Something to consider and take into account when you pick your colors. Moving on now to a different slide, we are going to talk about some words. And this one is adventurous. And for me personally, adventurous encompasses so much. All the way from like parasailing, hang gliding, parachuting, to something that's a little calmer, like walking along the creek side and looking at plants. It, de it all depends on what your idea of adventurous would be. Mine includes so much that I wanted to put every color in there that I could think of, especially red. But I wanted most of them to be bold, but I wanted to include so much because that's what it means to me. And while I was writing this, it brought up a thought that I thought was really important to mention here. And that is when you are making something, whether it's just for fun or if it's a purpose, you should include colors that mean something to you. Something that is in relationship to what you're creating. And if you're making an image for somebody else, I would probably ask that person what colors they find valuable in the image itself that you're creating. Say if you were making somebody's child's name, I would ask them what colors that they think of when they think of that child. It's just a thought, but possibly an important one. Okay, now on to something a little bit different. We're going to talk about the word spiritual, but mostly pastels. Some words such as spiritual can be challenging because while there is a mainstream definition, the meaning can actually vary from person to person. Typically, when we think of being spiritual, it brings pleasant thoughts such as love, belief, as well as many others. And I wanted to portray that in color. So I chose the word spiritual. And for me, the best way was to use mostly pastels because they're seen as loving, gentle, calming, and I thought the two would blend very well together. So if you're creating a word, think about the meaning and see what the overall tone is. Like I said, for me, spiritual, one of the best things I could come up with was trying to keep it lighter in color because it does typically evoke such a calming, pleasant emotion. And that's kind of what pastels tend to do. You think babies. Um, I keep thinking babies. I'm having such a hard time getting past that. Whenever I think soft pastels, I think babies. But there are so many other things like, say, a gentle rainstorm. Somebody you love. A tender sort of love. And, uh, boy, oh boy, babies. Okay, we're going to go on to the next one because I can't seem to get past the baby part. I guess suffice to say that when you're making something with pastels, it's because you have tender feelings for it. Or it happens to be something that relates to something tender and soft and gentle. At least I didn't say babies again until just now. Alrighty, on to the next image. This one is about using colors that are somewhat predictable because of the imagery. Say if you think of an orange, 
Well, you're going to think orange or maybe a yellow orange or a deep orange. Same for most identifiable objects, like the sun is yellow. Nighttime is dark, maybe dark purple, dark blue, almost black, etc. So that's where this subject is coming in. I wanted to do the word sweet, and for me, sweet tends to make me think of pinks and sometimes reds. Well, chocolate too, but I didn't include brown. Um, so I'll read what this says. It says, I use more predictable colors in the word sweet by combining mostly pinks and reds. It is quite acceptable and fun to add a little unexpected spark of other colors. I created that little bit of interest by adding a few greens, oranges, and yellows, which would typically be used for more citrus type things because of the tartness associated with it. And yes, I'm using food and taste as an example with this image because it's sweet. The word is sweet. But so when you're, when you're creating something, think about what color it actually is. And it does not have to be that color when you're making it. But when people look at it, they might not recognize what it is if you use a different color. Say, for example, if you made a, um, a blue orange, they might think it's a kind of a polka dotted pitted ball. But that's totally fine. I mean, it is totally cool because once again, you know, do it just because you want to do it. Do it because it's fun, exciting, different, playful. But if you are wanting to create something that is totally recognizable, then yes, tend to use the colors that are associated with the object or objects you're creating. But do add a few other little colors here and there. And that's one of the great things about tangles. If you're not comfortable using it in the predictable images, you can definitely add in a few of the colors that don't really apply in the tangles. Like um, the citrus colors, the green, yellow, orange. I did use on the W the yellow and orange, but mostly I kept it to the dangles and I mostly kept the word sweet in colors that I thought would be related to sweet. And that's pretty much it for that. Now after learning some of the things that we've covered on this video, I thought that it might be a good idea to show you some of the examples of the Drawing with Dangles book covers. I came up with four different ones and we picked the best one of the four or so what you know we thought was the best one of the four. What I did was create several different versions of different aspects of the cover and then put them side by side and looked at them and sometimes Doing that is a much easier way to see what you feel is the best. And I'm not suggesting you do four or six, eight, whatever complete images, but sometimes you can just do a real basic color swatch or thumbnails of your image. And you can get a really good idea if you think the color is going to work. So what do you think? Which one do you think would have made the best cover. I would really like to know. I was really open to all of them. I still wonder if the top left multicolored dangle wouldn't have been good. I think it would have. However, keeping it all in cool colors might have made you notice it more because if you've seen the cover of the book, there's color everywhere. So had the dangles been in all of the colors, it might have just blended in too much. And having it as either all warm or all cool made it stand out better. And just in case you're curious, the main reason I thought that I would include this image and cover this with you was so you could have kind of an inside thought process of what I was going through in the publisher and such as to how you come up with the best answer. 
and there is going to be a best answer. Like I said previously, there isn't a right or wrong, but there is most times an answer that you will feel brings forward what you are trying to say. And I thought it would be a good idea to show you something that actually happened and a little bit about how we went through the process to come up with the cover. That might help you when you're designing your images. Okay, so I suppose that's enough said about that image, but I would still really like to know which one you think is the best or which aspects of different ones that you think are the best. Which would draw you in to wanting to look at the book or purchase the book the most? I'd love to know. Thanks. Okay, so a little bit of a recap here. We talked about afternoon showers, which was using warm and cool colors together and how you can tie them together if you choose to. We talked about um, complementary or opposite colors and how you can use those to alter what is the main part of the image. We talked about using pastels. We talked about using bold colors. We talked about using representational colors for objects that actually exist that tend to only come in one or two colors like an orange, an apple. Oh no, can't use apple because they come in different colors. And we spent a little bit of time on the four potential covers for my Drawing Dangles book and some of the thought process that went into that. Hope you have gotten something out of this video. I was trying to enlighten you or share with you some different aspects of color that can make a big difference in your compositions and it was really enjoyable. I hope you enjoyed it too. If you have any questions, anything that you'd like to know more about, please um, post your questions in the comments section and I'd be happy to answer it for you or them for you. And if you'd like for me to do any other videos on this topic, go into more detail, let me know and I'll do that too. Also, I would really appreciate it if you did find value in this, if you would hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed, it'd be nice for you to subscribe and hit the bell button so you'll know when I put up more videos. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this all the way through. And if any of you are new, hi, nice to have you here. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.